Hey Dragonfly Swarm, we have returned to Geo Rock Rock Impact Geo Pebble Genshin Rock Pack Rocked because Zhongli is back, the god of rocks. Zhongli has returned for his second rerun or third raid up overall and I'm kind of super excited to make this guide because I've been using Zhongli basically everywhere I go since his first rerun back in 1.5 but at that time I wasn't making content because I was a little bitch. <coughs> <laughs> He's currently the strongest shield support in Genshin Impact by a long shot with massive HP scaling on his shields as well as overall HP scaling on his entire kit, making him extremely easy to build and play with minimal investment. So today, I want to ramble for 10 minutes straight about the father of all fathers, Zhongli. To start off this mountain of information, we're going to analyze Zhongli's relatively simple kit. Zhongli is primarily a support unit, so it's not a surprise that the damage scaling on his normal and charge attacks are lower than average, and in general, unless you're dead set on DPS Zhongli, I don't recommend recommend investing in his normal attack talent at all. As for his elemental skill, however, this is the bread and butter of Zhongli's entire kit. Now for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to explain it this way real quick. When you press this skill, literally all it does is create a stone pillar. It does not shield you or anything, it's just for, uh, fun. <laughs> however, when you hold this skill, it will create a stone pillar if there isn't already one on the field, and it will do a lot of other things. It'll create a geo explosion at the point of the pillar that deals damage, as well as applying a shield to your active character for 20 seconds at all levels. 20 seconds is a long time, especially when you consider the fact that the hold cooldown of this skill is only 12 seconds total, so your shield will have undoubtedly 100% uptime. And beyond this, the shield itself carries a massive 20.48% of Zhongli's maximum HP as shield HP, on top of a flat amount of 2311, making it by far the strongest shield in the game based on hit points alone. It is important to note that while Zhongli's pillar is on the field, it'll periodically pulse with AoE geo damage, and whenever it hits an enemy with said geo damage, it generates a teeny little energy particle. It's also also important to note that while the active character has Zhongli's shield, any enemy near the character will have all of their elemental and physical resistance shredded by 20%, which is huge. Now on to one of my favorite elemental bursts in the game, Zhongli's elemental burst is crazy. Basically what it does is it drops a massive planet on the enemies in front of you, and we could totally stop there because I feel like that's cool enough to not need explanation, but I'll explain anyways. What makes this ability so crazy despite its simplicity is that first of all, it has massive damage scaling at about 769% at level 8, which is huge, but beyond Beyond that, any enemy it hits is afflicted with this effect called Petrification, which no other character in the game can inflict. Petrification is a completely unoverridable hard CC status that any non-boss enemy in the game can be frozen by except for second form Kairagi, but who cares about them. The Petrification duration increases with burst level, coming in around 3.8 seconds at level 8. This effect makes teams with Zhongli on them have a much easier time dealing with enemies in a pinch or just locking them down for easier gameplay. As for Rock God's first ascension passive, it turns his figuratively indestructible shields into literally indestructible shields. Every time Zhongli's shield takes damage now, it will fortify itself, gaining 5% increased shield strength, and this can stack up to 5 times, lasting until the shield disappears, as if having the highest shield absorption in the game wasn't enough. But anyways, Zhongli's later ascension passive grants bonus damage to his entire kit based on his max HP. This actually adds a huge chunk of damage to his burst, but for the rest of his kit it's a little unnoticeable, but I'm sure it adds up. It's just not really the main focus when I play him personally. But despite the simplicity of the majority of his kit, Zhongli does his job better than anyone else can do it, and he provides a surprisingly large amount of team utility with his kit as well, just by shielding his active players and occasionally throwing a planet on the field, as you do. Moving on to constellations, Zhongli's earlier cons are, in my opinion, rather lackluster, especially compared to that of other 5 stars early cons, but I'll still discuss each one for the sake of value and information. At C1, Zhongli can now have two stone pillars on the field at once, which will allow him to generate energy twice as fast and deal twice as much damage with his pillars, but that's about it, and I'd say the most value you'll get out of this constellation is the doubled energy generation. At C2, Zhongli's burst now applies a jade shield to nearby allies, including yourself and your co-op allies, which seems kind of unnecessary since his shields already have 100% uptime, but my stupid brain. A friend and content creator, Ark Revner, had to explain to me that this works so well with Zhongli's C1 because it allows you to press his skill, use his burst to apply your shield, and then hold the skill after your shorter press cooldown so that you can now have your shield and two pillars up in a matter of seconds. Which blew my mind. So although these two constellations definitely aren't necessary for Zhongli, they do theoretically double his energy generation, damage, and damage radius without sacrificing rotation time. At C4, Zhongli's burst now has a 20% increased radius and the petrification effect lasts for two seconds 
longer, which is really, really nice because that adds up to about six full seconds of complete petrification on most enemies. And at C6, Zhongli basically becomes Kokomi. His shield now heals the active character for 40% of the damage the shield takes, which especially in Genshin's current environment where many sources of damage now ignore shields, this is an absolutely godly constellation. And it just adds even more to Zhongli's insane team utility. So if ever you wanted to wail for a support C6, this would be the one. But I don't recommend wailing. Save the money for food. In general, with Zhongli's constellations, they can be very powerful, especially the later constellations, but even at C0, Zhongli is one of the most powerful and versatile supports in the game. And if it matters to you, my Zhongli has been at C0 since I got him, and he still ends up in any Spiral Abyss team that I can fit him on just because of the sheer amount of utility and survivability he provides. Moving on to Zhongli's best artifact combinations, you have a couple of adjustable options based on how you want to play your Zhongli, and I'm going to recommend them in order from most supportive sets to most sub dps -y sets. Zhongli's most supportive set is by far the four-piece tenacity of the Millilith, as the set was literally designed for him. It grants him 20% bonus HP at the two-piece passive, and the four-piece passive increases all party members' attack by 20% and their shield strength by 30% for three seconds anytime Zhongli's skill hits an enemy. And the reason this set works so amazing for support Zhongli is because the extra HP scales his shield strength, and the four-piece passive grants a huge team-wide survivability increase as well as a respectable damage increase, making it amazing if you want your Zhongli to provide as much utility as possible. This set is also amazing for building Zhongli as a shield bot, where his only purpose in life is to keep your team shielded and alive. A good hybrid option between support and sub DPS is the four piece Noblesse Oblige set, which grants Zhongli 20% increased burst damage and grants your team 20% increased attack for 12 seconds when Zhongli uses his burst. So it's nice for extra damage as well as still providing team utility, and Noblesse is a pretty easy set to farm since you can just farm the domain and recycle any trash artifacts into new ones at the crafting station. Just be aware that if you're using Zhongli on a team with anyone else that uses the four piece Noblesse set, you shouldn't use it on Zhongli because the four piece passive doesn't stack, so it'll be completely useless on him. As for Zhongli's most sub dps -y, Meteor Droppy Explosion Damage Artifact set, you can use the two piece Noblesse Oblige and two piece Archaic Petra combination for 20% increased burst damage and 15% increased geo damage. This set is rather self explanatory, it just boosts your damage output on Zhongli and aims to make his burst hit as hard as possible. I don't not recommend this set, but restricting Zhongli to this combination when he literally has a set designed for him that provides so, so much team utility is eh, kind of a missed opportunity. But if you really want to go for damage on Zhongli, this would be the set combination to do that with, as it can massively multiply the already huge damage scaling on his burst, as well as making the geo damage from his skill tick for higher damage. Overall though, I'd say his most valuable set is the four piece tenacity. It just provides so much for himself and for his team, it's difficult to pass that up. As for the stats you want to focus on Zhongli, it kind of depends on what set you want to use on him. If you're running full support Zhongli, you could literally just focus all of your stats except the Geo Goblet into HP, the Circlet, the Sands, the Substats, everything. Doing this will make Zhongli's shield extremely tanky as well as granting a huge chunk of his HP pool as extra burst damage. But if you'd rather have a nice balance of damage and utility, you can run a Crit Circlet instead of an HP Circlet and focus some of your Substats into Crit Ratios rather than entirely into HP. Just gonna reiterate that the Goblet does have to be Geo though, not, um... Dendro. But anyways, we're gonna move on. Weapons, we love them, unless they're useless. I usually discuss the most powerful weapons first, but unfortunately, I gotta make a disclaimer to save you guys from spending. Zhongli's signature weapon, the Vortex Vanquisher, which is being rated up alongside his banner, is not great on him. It's not just that it's not his best in slot, it actually just isn't great on him. It has a huge 608 base attack with a 49.6% attack bonus at level 90, and the passive provides 20% shield strength as well as increasing your attack by 4% anytime you land a hit on an enemy to 5 stacks maximum, and once this effect is fully stacked, the attack increase is increased by 100%. And while this is a lot of attack bonuses, it, like, a lot, a lot, there are two big problems with this that still to this day baffle me as to why Mihoyo thought this was a good design for Zhongli. Firstly, attack stats have diminishing returns, meaning the more you put into a character's attack, the less you get out of it. And secondly, Zhongli is not designed to use attack percent effectively. Like, his entire kit scales off of his HP, and yet they chose to give him a weapon that grants him attack instead? What? So I instead introduced to you Zhongli's real best in slot, the Staff of Homa. But that shouldn't really be a surprise, this weapon is one of the strongest weapons in the game. The Staff of Homa grants Zhongli 608 base attack and a really nice 66.2% crit damage bonus at level 90. The passive increases your HP by a huge 20% at R1 and provides an attack bonus based on your max HP. And when your max HP is below 50%, this bonus is increased by 1%. Essentially this rounds out Zhongli's kit perfectly, giving him a nice base attack, a really nice crit ratio, a huge chunk of extra 
extra HP for his scaling, and then a little bit of extra attack based on his max HP, which is cool and snazzy. This weapon kind of baffled people when it came out because it works so well on basically every polearm user, but it's even more surprising that it's Zhongli's best in slot, despite him literally having his own signature weapon. But the only other weapon that I can recommend besides Staff of Homa, however, is uh, the three-star Black Tassel. <laughs> I'm not joking, and I actually use this polearm on him, and I have been using it since I got him. At level 90, the base attack is a super low 354, but that's not why this weapon is Zhongli's other best weapon. It's because the weapon grants a huge 46.9% HP boost at level 90, which at high levels increases Zhongli's maximum HP by almost 8,000 points. So basically, this weapon is great if you want to run Shieldbot Zhongli, and it's actually mathematically better than Staff of Homa if you're strictly using Shieldbot Zhongli. For now, it's kind of your best option in terms of high value, plus it's a 3-star, and you don't need to refine it to maximize its potential on Zhongli. You can also get away with other weapons such as Skyward Spine, Fav Lance, or Prototype Star Glitter as well if you really don't want to use Black Tassel, and all three of the weapons I just mentioned come with energy recharge bonuses, so you'll have Zhongli's burst up more often if that matters to you. But there's also the Primordial Jade Wing Spear or Deathmatch for sub DPS Zhongli, because they both provide nice crit rate bonuses so you can easily build your crit ratio. But overall with weapons, I highly recommend either Staff of Homa if you have it or Black Tassel, because of the way Zhongli scales so effectively with HP bonuses. As for teams, this is like the first guide ever where I can confidently say this section is going to be really straightforward. Zhongli is a character that works in literally any team. You can slap him into any team and his primary job, being a shielder and sub DPS, can be done perfectly. That said, he does have some really unique pairings recently that I do want to mention. Firstly and most obviously, Zhongli is the enabler of the powerful new Mono Geo comp in which you use Zhongli, Goro, and then any of the other Geo characters as main DPS units for Zhongli and Goro to support. Then obviously if you want, you can bring in Albedo as well for extra Geo damage and energy circulation, or Yunjin for normal attack buffs. Zhongli is the best and kind of the only team shielder for Geo that makes Mono Geo work so well, and it's the first time ever that there's actually a team comp in the game that doesn't work to its fullest capacity without Zhongli, which is really cool. But also, Zhongli works extremely well with Raiden Shogun, given that she can not only massively buff his burst damage with her elemental skill, but he can also shield and grant her 20% electro resistance shred while she's stuck on the field using her burst, and vice versa, so they work really well together as team units. Finally, there's also the Geo Resonance Hu Tao team where you use Zhongli and another Geo unit, preferably Yunjin, to shield Hu Tao and grant her a huge bonus to her damage with Zhongli's resistance shreds, Yunjin's attack damage buffs, and Geo Resonance's increased damage output, as well as Singcho's Vaporize, but that was obvious. And this team works really well for Hu Tao right now, and is another team that Zhongli kind of has to be in to work to its fullest potential, so although he's generally very abstract and you can put him on any team you want, he's recently seen a lot of new teams that actually need him to perform at their best, so it's almost as if he's gotten stronger with time rather than being nerfed as time goes on. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the Zhongli guide. We are at the top of the mountain now, and if you climbed all the way up here with me, you might as well like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed, you should totally consider doing so, because it helps the channel a lot. Also, if you want, you can follow me on Twitch or join my Discord server to stick around in my community, because I would love to see you around and hang out. Alrighty, I'm gonna go continue to put Zhongli in every team comp ever, because he's literally the most insane survivability support Mihoyo will ever release. Goodbye.